What's up everybody? Welcome back to our channel. <laughs> Welcome back to our channel here on We The Dreamers. I'm Kate and today I'm excited to bring you episode two in our three-part closet detox challenge series. <laughs> Dreamers, I'm Kate. Today's episode is all about the purge, the big decision making, getting rid of stuff, deciding what to keep, deciding what belongs in your life. In the last episode, we talked all about prepping before the purge. If you want to check that out, the first episode in this series is right here, but you also don't have to have watched the prep episode. If you just want to get straight to it, just get to purging your closet, it's definitely not a prerequisite. So feel free to just jump in and start purging. And if you want to go back and check out the prep episode afterwards, then go for it. This is really the main event of this project of cleaning out our closet because it's where we're gonna make decisions it's where we're gonna cut down on the stuff that's in there so that we have a more harmonious and calm and accessible space that at the end of this hopefully is full of only things that we love but purging in and of itself is definitely kind of an emotional process which is why I think there's so many different articles and tips and you know methods for cleaning out your closet because you know i love clothes i think we live our lives in our clothes we live our lives in our wardrobe and we do get attached to things and it can be really difficult to determine if we actually want something as a part of our life or if there's some other reason that we're hanging on to it so today we're going to go through our closet and ask ourselves five main questions to help us get to the heart of whether or not something belongs in our lives. The thing that I've always struggled with when cleaning out my closet with different methods is just the clarity factor. Like, I love the idea of Marie Kondo's method of sparking joy, but sometimes there's a little bit of an ambiguous feeling for me around sparking joy, and I can't quite decode the reason for which something sparks joy, and sometimes that confuses me. So. I put together these five questions that I feel like are more specific and more targeted and these are the ones that have really helped me zero in on whether or not something belongs in my life. It might still be something that feels joyful for me or that brings up memories that are joyful, but it might not belong in my life anymore. It might not deserve space in my closet that could be taken up by something that really fits who I am now a lot more. So this is kind of obvious, but just as a general kind of tip here, I would say, you know, make sure that you set aside several hours, probably even an entire day or a weekend for this part of the project. Because for me, I like to be able to feel like I can take my time with this. Someone else might be different. You might feel like rapid fire going through stuff, you know, my first instinct, you know, that might help you get clarity on whether or not you want to keep an item and that's fine. But for me, in order to avoid feeling super overwhelmed and to avoid feeling a bunch of pressure on myself, I like to really know that I have a couple of days or at least a whole day set aside to make a huge mess, to throw shit all over the place, to have it be, you know, really get into the weeds, like allow yourself to get into the weeds and don't worry if there's big piles of stuff and they stay there for hours or for a weekend. It's best, I think, when you're making big decisions like this, especially if, like me, you have a lot of stuff and you have too much stuff for your limited space, it's a good idea to manage your expectations about what you can get done in a certain amount of time. And you can approach this in a couple of different ways. If you do have a lot of stuff and you like to do things by category, maybe you wanna start with sweaters. Maybe you wanna start with jeans. Maybe you wanna start with dresses. You know, if you feel like it helps you to go through things in sort of an organized, categorized manner, then do it that way. It might help your brain sort of, you know, cut down on the visual noise. Um, I definitely like to approach this step this way because it makes me feel like I'm getting things done in chunks. So grab your first category of items and lay them all out on the floor or on your bed or on a rug and let's get right into it. Question number one, if I were going on vacation or traveling to a climate or function where this garment was appropriate, would I want to pack it? As someone who has spent so much time for basically half of my life living out of a suitcase. I have been a touring musician and a recording artist for most of my adult life. If you don't know, I have done so much traveling. I have lived out of a suitcase on and off for the last decade. 
I can truly say that I believe what you actually want to bring with you when you travel speaks volumes. If you really want to know if you love a piece, the suitcase test is always a telling one. Now obviously, if you're like me and you like to try to carry on, there are certain items that just aren't going to be practical for traveling. Or say you do a lot of traveling to cities where you have to walk a lot, like New York or Paris or places where it's not going to be practical to bring your four inch heel boots, but you love those boots. Obviously, this question isn't going to necessarily be the most pointed one if we're talking about items that are a little bit more special occasion, but for the most part, for most items in your closet, I think that you can get a very good sense of the degree to which you love that item if you ask yourself if you would want to pack it. Personally, I have bought so many things that I thought would be perfect for a certain trip or function, whether it was a, you know, a leisure trip or a business work trip. And then when it comes time to actually pack for that trip, I don't end up choosing the item and I'm not exactly sure why I just don't pick it. And the fact that those pieces continually keep not making the cut says to me that maybe I don't actually love them as much as I thought. So for example, I have a handful of summery dresses that I had initially bought because I thought they'd be perfect for a warm weather wedding. And then a few summer weddings show up on the calendar and I end up packing something else, something else that feels like a sure deal, you know? You have those pieces where you're like, this is a staple, I know that I can rock this and I'm not gonna be worried that like the strap's falling down or like, do I have the right bra for it? Like, I end up picking something instead of the new dress that I know is a sure deal. Or, I hate to admit, I end up going shopping and just buying something new closer to the function. So chances are, if I don't like those couple of summery dresses enough to pack them for these weddings a couple times in a row, I'm not gonna be excited to pack them for a wedding a year from now. I'm probably not going to reach for them very often in my everyday life, maybe ever. So that's a pretty good indication to me that those dresses are out. This dress is a good example of one that I really love in theory. I actually have it in two other prints. And I bought this in a Reformation sale, which if you've ever shopped the Reformation sale, you know that they're always final sale. So if you mess up, you can't, you know, return anything. So this is like a really cute print. It's a really cute cut, but I have repeatedly not packed this for like summery trips or summery work stuff. I have packed the other ones that I have that are in different prints. And so as much as I really do think this is cute, I have repeatedly not chosen it. You know, sometimes it's helpful to say if you have something that's really similar to another piece in your closet, if you have something that's like the same item, but in a different print or a different color, ask yourself, would I ever choose this over the other one? And if the answer is no, or probably not, then you're probably not ever gonna wear it. Okay, question number two. If I were to run into somebody I admire today, would I be glad that I chose this piece or outfit? Now, first of all, I don't mean to imply here that our wardrobe or our closet components should be based on impressing other people because obviously in an ideal world, it should always be about just dressing for yourself. But let's face it, we all tend to use our style as a form of self-expression and there's almost always something that we're hoping to convey to others with the clothes we choose to wear. Whether that person you admire is a friend, an acquaintance, total strangers, or someone you think is cute, or even I dare say your ex in the unlikely and possibly terrifying event that you should run into them at Trader Joe's or the post office, asking yourself, would I be relieved to be wearing this item, AKA whatever it is that you define as a cute outfit, if I ran into that person today, that's a pretty good indication of whether or not you really feel good about that piece or that outfit and whether or not it belongs in your closet. Personally, for me, there are a couple of different versions of this. Like in a couple months, I'm going to be speaking at a creativity conference called Alt Summit. I'm really excited about it. I've been a speaker at this conference before and it's just a really amazing gathering of creative entrepreneurs and just incredible women who are really artistic and going into something like this, I always give a lot of thought to what it is that I want to bring with me for this conference. Anything in my closet that I know, wow, if I ran into someone that I met at that conference and I was wearing this today, I would be stoked because I would feel like it's really representative of who I am as a creative woman and entrepreneur. That's a sure sign. This is something I love.
Question number three. If I walked into a store today and the same exact item was for sale at full price, would I likely buy or choose it again? This one is obviously really hypothetical, but I do think that it can be a helpful indicator of whether or not you really love something. I love a good sale as much as the next person. I grew up in the Midwest. I'm definitely not somebody who thinks that you know, in order to prove that you love something, you have to always buy it at full price. Absolutely not. But it's always really helpful to weigh whether or not the piece is something that I would have bought at full price, given that I had the budget. All of us get trapped into the allure of a bargain now and then, but just because something is a bargain, we all know, doesn't mean that it deserves space in our closet or that it's something that we need to take advantage of. Still definitely trying to learn this lesson myself, but this is something that's a really helpful indicator for me. Like for example, this top that I'm wearing right now is one that I bought secondhand on a site called The Real Real. I love to buy things secondhand. I'm trying to do a better job of not buying as much, you know, fast fashion. And to be honest, it's not the type of top that I would have been able to have the budget for if I bought it at full price. It was, you know, hanging up in the Gallery Lafayette when I was living in Paris a couple years back and I always admired it and I never bought it because it was way too expensive. And then a few years later, someone was selling it on the real real for 75% less and I was so excited and I bought it. And when I think about a piece like this, I know for certain that if I had had the budget at the time when I was living in Paris, I absolutely would have bought it. And if I walked into a store today, and if I was the type of person who bought designer items at full price, which I'm not, but if I was, I would for sure choose this top again. So that's a good indicator that it's not just something I bought because it was for sale on the real real and it was 75% less than it had been in the store. I know for sure that I actually really love the item. You're probably also familiar with this if you've ever, like me, spilled a bunch of pizza sauce on your favorite white blouse and subsequently gone and started scouring Poshmark or the real real or Depop for the exact same piece. And that's always a great indicator that like, wow, I definitely love this. So as a bolt on to this question, would I buy it again? Would I go look for it again if I spilled red wine or pizza sauce all over this? How hard would I try to save this item? Like how deep would I go into the Reddit threads of laundry care and getting stains out? How committed would I be to saving this item or finding this item again if some irreversible accident happened to it? Okay, question number four is kind of a philosophical question, but I think it's a really, really important one. Do I feel like the me I wanna be in this item or outfit? So during the prep episode, we did some journaling and gave some thought to the question of, you know, if I can picture my ideal self, what does his or her or their closet look like? You know, what kind of outfits do they wear? How do they dress? And so if I am going through my closet right now and I'm struggling over whether or not I wanna keep an item, if I can ask myself, do I feel like that version of myself that I want to be in this item? Do I feel like the me I want to be in this item? You know, does it make me feel like myself? You don't even have to really know why something makes you feel like yourself, but you do know. In the last episode, I mentioned my favorite boutique in New Orleans, which is called St. Claude's Social Club. If you're ever there, it's absolutely adorable. Definitely check it out. And it's just the most beautifully curated, colorful, creative boutique. And they always have the coolest pieces. And I can't always afford every single thing in there, but I really feel like myself. When I walk around in there, I'm like, man, this place gets me. Whoever buys for this shop understands me. And I don't even really know why but I know that when I'm there, I definitely feel more like me. And so I think that there are certain outfits, you know, like you know if you're wearing an outfit one day where you're like, I'm feeling myself. Like I feel like me, this outfit is for some reason or another just representative of my vibe. And so it can really just be helpful sometimes to put something on and be like, do I feel like myself right now? Or do I feel kind of like I'm trying to be a version of me that I'm not. I have tried on many different selves in the fashion realm. And I mean, I have a lot of really unspeakable, you know, fashion faux pas in my past from like 2008 days and stuff. The dresses over leggings vibe, I've been there. I remember when I went to college, I was trying to sort of figure out 
who my friends were gonna be and who I was gonna hang out with. And I was a musician who knew I was probably gonna leave school soon to sign a record deal. So I sort of had this whole musician wardrobe and this, this sense of who I was when I was performing on stage. But I also kind of tried on like, maybe I'm this, maybe I'm this preppy college girl too. And you know, kind of like for a couple of months dressed in a lot of like polos and you know, preppy, outfits and I don't even really know pearl necklace and polos and stuff and you know it was fine but after a couple of months I was like what am I doing this doesn't make me feel like myself I think I'm just trying this on because I'm in an environment where this is a popular look and there's nothing wrong with trying on different looks and different selves so to speak but I also think it's important to be able to take a big picture look after a certain amount of time and especially if you're stuck on deciding if you wanna keep an item or not, ask yourself, when I wear this, do I feel like me or do I feel like a version of myself where I'm trying to impress other people that I don't really care about impressing? So this is an example of a place where you can use other people's opinions sort of in the other way. Like, am I trying to impress people that I don't care about impressing at all, whose opinion I don't care about in this item? If so, then it's done. Okay, question number five. Does this item make me feel guilty at all? And why am I not already wearing it more often? So the first part of this question, does it make me feel guilty? So many things in my closet make me feel guilty. And I think it's because we experience this sense of disappointment in ourselves for not having worn the item more often, or we feel bad because it was a gift from you know, a friend or a family member. And it's natural to feel guilty if somebody took the time to pick it out for you and they spent the money and they gave it to you and you don't really wear it. But usually underneath that feeling of guilt is the reality that you don't really love the item or that it just isn't right for you anymore. A lot of times I also find myself feeling guilty about stuff that I bought for myself and I just feel guilty because it costs money. And it's really normal to be bummed that your investment in this item didn't necessarily pay off because you sort of pull it out of your closet and you realize, man, I never wear this. It's just been sitting here. Ultimately, everybody does this. We all sort of miscalculate, but it doesn't really do any good to wallow in a bunch of, you know, self-hatred over the fact that you bought something that didn't end up working out. Everybody does it, it happens. And the good news is you can sell it or donate it so that somebody else can enjoy it. So I say nine times out of 10, if something makes you feel guilty, no questions asked, it's time to move on from the item. It's time to sell it or it's time to donate it or it's time to get rid of it if it's in bad shape, just be done with it. The second part of this question I think is helpful if you are at a crossroads and you can't figure out what to do. If you're really torn about something, Asking yourself why you're not wearing it more often is really, really helpful because it sort of helps you get to the heart of where this piece is sort of coming up against a roadblock, right? So a couple of years back, I had a couple of like three quarter sleeve blouses that were really pretty and I wasn't wearing them. I just, when I was going through and doing a closet clean out, I realized like, man, I never ever reach for these. Why am I not wearing these more often? And I realized in asking that, that a three quarter sleeve is something that I tend to avoid because I'm usually cold. I have to have some kind of sweater or jacket with me wherever in case there's like, you know, crazy air conditioning or whatever. I get cold a lot. And this might sound stupid to somebody else, but putting a jacket or a sweater over a three quarter sleeve blouse a lot of times will push the sleeve up like this and it's not comfy and then it's weird and then this part is bunchy and you look like a linebacker and then your arm down here is colder. And basically I just realized that I do best if I have like a sleeveless or a short sleeve top or a long sleeve top. I don't do great with three quarter sleeves and that's why I was avoiding them because I subconsciously knew that it was going to be like kind of a fussy vibe if I put a jacket or a sweater over this blouse. Other reasons that you might avoid wearing something would be like it's itchy and some people are more sensitive to that stuff than others. Personally, I can't stand if something is itchy but you also might realize that you don't have the right undergarment or bra to go with this dress and so you avoid it because you can't really figure out how to put it together in the right way. Whatever it is, spelling it out can help you then make a decision. Am I going to solve this pain point? Am I gonna find the right undergarment for this? Am I going to, you know, figure out how to make this item a part of my regular rotation? 
or is it not worth it to me to solve this pain point? Is it easier for me just to donate or sell or get rid of this item and resolve in the future to buy things that I know I have the right undergarments for, or I know that I have a sweater that will fit over it. This is a good example of something that I really like, that makes me feel like myself, that I would pack for vacation, but I'm not already wearing it. And the reason that I'm not already wearing this often is because the straps are way too long and they fall off and I'm always worried that I'm gonna have a wardrobe malfunction in this top. So now I have to decide, is it worth it to me to go to the tailor and get these shortened? Is it worth it to me to go try and find maybe a better undergarment to wear with this or... So during this purge, that's the main thing you want to accomplish is just understanding what's going to be a part of my life going forward and what isn't. Deciding what you're going to donate, what you're going to sell, and what you're going to throw away, that is so much easier than deciding if something is going to be a part of your life or not. So this episode is really about decide what's going to make the cut and be a part of your wardrobe. You might find that you really want something to be a part of your wardrobe, to stay in your closet, but you don't maybe have the necessary other pieces to go with it right now, that's fine, that's okay. We're going to address that in the final episode, put it all together. We're gonna figure out how to solve the pain points of making the things in your closet that you wanna keep, but you're not wearing that often. We're gonna solve that pain point and figure out how to make it easier for you to incorporate that item into your regular rotation, into your wardrobe. For now though, the best thing you can do is Go through these questions as many times as you need to and just have two piles. This is staying, this is going. If among this pile of stuff that didn't make the cut, there is sort of a sub pile of things that you're still really struggling with, that you're still really on the fence about, here's what I would do. I would get a cardboard box or a garbage bag or whatever, put the on the fence stuff in there, really try to keep the on the fence stuff to a minimum though. Don't cave in and, and do this for every single thing you're getting rid of, you know, don't, don't go back on your progress. But if you need to have a sort of reserve pile of on the fence stuff, put it in a box or put it in a garbage bag, put it in your car if you have the room or your garage or somewhere, you know, a closet where you're not gonna be able to look at it and give yourself a deadline. It could be a week, it could be a month, it could be six months. Give yourself a deadline and say, if I don't go back in there to rescue one of these items within this period of time, then they're gone. This is another example of a Reformation sale purchase. I'm obsessed with this print. I love these colors so much and I love this little velvet bow. It's so cute, but I cannot for the life of me find the right bra to go underneath this dress. I've tried so many different ones. They all just, it just looks weird on me. I don't know. Maybe it's just like not the right cut for me. I don't know, but it's one of those where ugh, this is probably going to go in the on the fence thing and if i want to save it enough to try again for the one last time to find the right undergarment for it then i will okay so now that you have two piles stuff that is making the cut and stuff that is not making the cut you have finished the purge at this stage what i usually do is temporarily put all of the stuff that is making the cut back in the closet or back in the drawers it doesn't have to look perfect it doesn't have to be perfectly organized just put it back get it out of your sight and put the stuff that isn't making the cut in a box or in bags and get that out of your sight. Just separate them and call it a day for now. In the next and final episode, which is put it all in order, we are going to handle that part of organizing the stuff that you've decided to keep as part of your life, figuring out what kind of outfits you wanna wear those items with, and we're gonna deal with whether we're going to donate, whether we're going to sell, or whether we're going to throw away the stuff that did not make the cut. So for now, get it out of sight. The stuff that's staying goes back in the closet. The stuff that's going goes in some boxes and you can congratulate yourself on a job well done. The great thing is it's already gonna feel so good to put that stuff back, even though it's not gonna be perfectly organized in the final eventual way you are going to notice a difference. There is nothing better than putting stuff back in your closet and realizing that you can actually 
breathe in there and realizing, oh wow, I can actually see the light at the end of the tunnel. This is gonna be so great. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the third and final episode of putting it all in order next time. I'm really excited to finish up this closet detox challenge with all of you. And I so appreciate hearing that this is working for all of you. Thank you so much for your comments. Please let me know in the comments how this is going for you, if these questions were helpful. And also I would love to hear from you if there are any other types of questions that you like to ask yourself to get clarity on whether or not an item belongs in your life anymore. I always get the best ideas from all of you. So please let me know in the comments. Thanks so much for tuning in and I'll see you in the next episode.